this camera let me just swipe this over and I saw someone has sunny weather in Canada aren't you lucky you little stinker all right so I have my white embossing powder I have my embossing buddy I have my Versamark other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is turn on my heat tool so it's really, really hot because that way we'll have less warping of the cardstock. So you're going to hear this running in the background. I apologize. But I'll talk loud and hopefully you'll just forget that that's there. I also have a coffee filter to catch my embossing powder. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and set it over here. So what we'll do first, I'm going to move these over. What we'll do first is, I've been wanting to do this one, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull out a couple things. Pull out the palm trees. Oops, got a flower stuck there. And I think these leaves would be really nice. I even think this frame would be cool. Hmm. I also wanted to do the flowers, and I'm not gonna do this one because this is just from here. So you can see what that looks like there. And then I just added a little strip of uh, the whale DSP there. Super simple. All right, so what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna go with this one. This is a little bit big, but that's okay. So we're gonna, we're gonna do all these the same way. I'm going to take my embossing buddy. I'm just trying to cut down on the static. And I'm going to do just really quickly, just to make sure it's clean. So I'm going to wipe with my chamois and then wipe it off with my... <laughs> Guys, remember when I ironed that? That was classic, right? <laughs> my towel there. Okay, so Versamark, and I'm just going to do this to the side, because I don't really know what we're going to do with this yet, but I just want to do something. All right, so I have my palm trees, okay, so there's one, I'm going to put this back. him over there and I'm gonna just heat set this while I have it so if your heat tool is really really hot your powder should melt really fast you do want to be very conscious to keep the heat tool moving because it can singe your white embossing powder and it'll kind of look yellow and I know we're gonna color on it but you still want it to be nice as possible all right, so there's one. So we have one there. Then I'm gonna do, and I think the cool part about this too is because you have such a vivid contrast with the black, it really makes the color stand out. So then I'm gonna try the field of flowers. So I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a couple things on this. So we'll do a couple flowers. That way, maybe I can show you a few different um, ideas. We'll do one. And the Versamark does stay wet for a little bit, so you don't have to really worry that it's going to be dry. So we'll do those two. I'm going to sprinkle on here. Just so I can see where they are. And if you get little smudges of powder, just take an old or a, a paintbrush you don't really use anymore and just brush it off. There's one. Then we have our flowers. Let me just kind of look and see. There we go. Guess you could do it either way, but I'm gonna aim for doing it right side up. Put these here. All 
All right, and I'm gonna do one more just really quickly. I'm gonna just put a dragonfly because I think it'll be neat. All right, so we're gonna take this. Just give it a good hard flick. We'll get rid of some of the stuff. And then again, if you have any little bits, because I probably might have touched this, just take your brush, just brush them off. Okay, let me move this over. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set this one. Now, again, in case you've never worked with embossing powder, it gets shiny when it is set. So it goes from powdery to shiny. It's different depending on what color you use. So for example, if you're using white or a, like a metallic, so a silver is gonna be a little bit more shiny. Clear is pretty shiny. White is not quite as shiny but it still has a noticeable difference when you're looking at it. The other thing you could do if you wanted to have a really, really white image is you could use your Stamparatus. So you can see that is set, it's got a shine to it. You could use your Stamparatus and then you would have a really heavy white base. So I'm gonna layer this one here. So there's that. And let's see, I'm gonna put this one away. Um, I'm gonna try over here. I'm gonna do Forever Fern. I'm just gonna pick a couple random things to do. Let's see. Do this one. Just hit this with you. Make sure you use your embossing buddy. That's definitely gonna cut down on your static. And even though you might have a little bit of a white dusting there, I'll show you something to get rid of that when we're finished. Oh yeah, the heat gun holder is called the Boss. It is an amazing product. You can find it on Crafter Solutions. Hang on one second here. I'll just pop this over here while I'm showing you. So this is where you can find it, Crafter Solutions. Lisa and John are the owners of that. And Lisa's husband makes all of the things that we're looking for. He's the maker of all the things. This one I'm going to just do some random stamps on. I'm going to grab one more. Just put some different stuff on this one. One more. Okay. Starting to run out of space here. That's okay. They have a Facebook page and an Etsy shop. And if you have a design that you think would be something useful, they are always looking for new ideas as well. So, all right, so there are those. And dump this back and we'll brush this off a little bit. So I have just like a couple little spots. Okay, so we're going to heat this up. And I'm going to use the navy piece. We'll use do something nautical with that one. And then the last one, I have one more black piece, one more black panel. I'll just get this spot right here.
and you can tell it all looks shiny. So that's, that one's good. And so I'm gonna bring out my navy piece. And what I did was I cut all of these down. That way they'd be pretty easy to layer onto something if that's what we were looking for. All right, we will try. But we'll try the anchor, I'm sorry, the lighthouse and the small sailboat. Just for something different. Oh, that's a little too. Small. Okay, so I'm just going to versa mark the lighthouse and the sailboat. Now, one thing I want to tell you, I'm not doing it obviously, because I'm trying to make this not quite as long. You definitely want to clean your stamps that have Versamark on them. Not fast, but pretty quickly because the Versamark can attract debris, dust, lint, gook. So Make sure you clean that off because otherwise your stamps are going to be really, not really, really need a good cleaning. It's just a little bit down here. You could use a tiny brush. This just happens to be the one I grabbed. So. You could even go in if you happen to have a Versamark pen, and I'm going to show you just for the heck of it. You could make like an extension of the land or the water. This one's a little bit fatter than probably what I would use. You could add a little bit more water to it. This has this is a double sided marker too. That's the nice part about it. I don't know what this one's going to look like, so forgive me. It might look awful. But I got that at, um, I don't know, probably like Michael's or Joann's or something. So I just added a little bit, oops, I missed one spot, a little bit extra water feature in here. That looks good. All right, let me dump this. And then we'll heat this one. So for my, I have one more black panel. So does anybody have anything they'd like to see that maybe I haven't done yet with the stamp sets? So let me move this over here. We have palm trees, we have random leaves, we have flowers. We have a sailboat, feathers. All right, don't try this. You better try this at home. Come on, somebody ought to try this at home. Look, I'm on here making all the mistakes. So by the time you guys do this, you'll be professionals, right? You know, I make mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> all right, feathers, feathers it is. And you know what? I'm going to tell you one other thing about that Versamark pen. I am truly not kidding. I have had that pen as long as I've been stamping, which is like 20 years. And it's still juicy. All right, so that one's pretty well set. So let me just make sure I got the bottom here. All right, one last we'll do the feathers. So that's the last one. And then let's see. I think I'm going to go with the feather feather instead of the feather pen. All right. So we have the feather. We do this last time. Just hit it with our anti-static powder tool. All right. So we'll just do feathers like random. Oh, 
the open. <laughs> I gotcha. You know, I like to live on the edge, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure maybe there's a gentleman here watching. I think I've seen someone pop on here once or twice before. That's the case of do what I say, not what I do, right? <laughs> All right, put there. Put a little one hanging off the edge here. Okay, I think that looks good. I will tell you, though, I know I've told you before that I've accidentally embossed some of my embossing powder, and then it kind of gets a little funky in there. So you're probably right. I should probably take my own advice and close it up in between. Whoops. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna give this a super good flick. There we go. That's There's a teeny bit of scatter, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna close this up. All right, let me do this last one. I will tell you one thing, it's melting super fast now. This has been on so long, so that's good. These feathers have a lot of detail, so I'm just trying to make sure that everything is fully melted. Because if not, if you start coloring on them, it's just gonna wipe away the powder. I think that looks good. I'm gonna get one more spot. That looks pretty good, okay. Oh, it's raining, yuckies. Okay. So let me move all these things out of the way. I'm going to put, oh, look, I got that all over that. Oopsie. Okay, so I'm going to show you just quickly before we start with our coloring what you can do. So you can take your microfiber towel and just wipe it. And if you have any residual dust from your embossing or your anti solder you know your embossing buddy. If you have anything left over from that, it'll come off. So just wipe these off. Okay. All right, now let me move these over. I know I kind of stamped off a little bit here, so I'm going to move that. And I'm going to do one more thing. So I do apologize. Bear with me. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can. I'm not going to put these away, but I'm going to just wipe them off. Because especially between all of the... Um, embossing powder that's in here. I just want to at least give them a quick wipe. And I'll just move all these off to the side. So what we'll do is for the leaves, we could do them in some different greens. Um, the flowers, obviously we'll do some greens and then we'll bring in some brighter colors. Like I think the magenta madness will look really pretty. I'm really looking forward to seeing that little dragonfly. All right, last one. Okay, so then I'm going to just move these. Move all these biggies off to the side. I'm going to leave the stamp sets handy because in case we end up filling or finishing a bunch of cards. There we go. Okay, let me move these over for a moment. So now... Now comes the fun part. 
So you can do this lots of different ways. So if you remember when I did this, so say if you, you like this, but you're like, it just needs something. Throw in a little piece of DSP. There's lots of different things you can do to add to it, okay? So we will start with, so we have palm trees. Let's just do this one. We have soft suede, light and dark. But we're going to want our palm trees. I feel like we're going to want them vivid. So I'm going to bring out my Call Me Clover. I'm sure some of you might still have this. If not, this is one that is retired. So if you don't have it, I'm sorry. And then just jade. Just for a little bit of difference. So what we'll do is we're going to start with the light. Soft suede. And then all you're going to do is just bring, bring your color. And if honestly, if you go off of it a little bit, it's not really terrifically noticeable. I'm going to bring in a little dark soft suede just kind of to the one side. You can see a little bit of the line if you go off the line on the black, but it's not it's not like oh my god, that looks awful. It's not that bad really. So I'm going to go with a little bit of light call me clover just kind of on the couple of the spots. Like that. And then I'm going to go with some dark Just Jade. On the other one, I'll do the um, light Just Jade to see if it's a huge difference. So you can kind of bring this. I feel like I might even put a little bit of shaded spruce on this. Just for like a couple little darker spots. Where's that one? Yeah, so I have dark shaded spruce. Bring a little bit, kind of like a dark part down the middle. Because you definitely want to, to add a little bit of depth to your palm tree. You don't want it to all just be one color. Because that's just kind of boring too. Let's see. So I have my light just jade. I'll go on this side. That's definitely much lighter than the Call Me Clover. Obviously, I know they're different colors. But just in case you maybe don't have one. But the nice part about the blends is even when you are using these to color with, you still can get, if you stay in the same color family, so you're, you're picking all things that are green, they really do work very nicely together. So that's light and dark, just jade on this side. This one I started with Call Me Clover, and quite honestly, there's not that much difference. And then I'm going to bring in... For just a little bit of a difference. So this side I did dark shaded spruce. On this side I'll do light shaded spruce. So we'll bring in a little bit. That's definitely much lighter for the shaded spruce. I'm just kind of filling in the white spot. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of dark anyway. Trying to kind of follow the palm but not really make it so uniform and then just for this for the very very end and I know this might sound a little bit crazy but I have light mango melody I'm just gonna put just a little bit just kind of in a couple spots just to bring a brightness and the same with this because you know in real life we have those palm trees that have those little funny spots just like all of our house plants, <laughs> the ones that are getting ready to go, just to bring a little bit of depth to it. But that looks really neat. And again, now that the alcohol has dried out of the color, you can't see any overlay at all. And I'm going to tell you, I did not do a super job of staying in the line. So there's the palm tree. I will finish this up after the fact because I want to be able to try to color them to kind of help you guys with the coloring first. Let me move that out of the way. So there's one. So since we have our greens out, we'll do the base here. So I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to get rid of the, uh, call me Clover. So that one and that one. So get rid of those. And I'm going to bring, I feel like I should bring in mint because I know Donna's watching, but I'll be nice and I'm going to go with Granny Apple instead. <laughs> so we'll start with the light Granny Apple for our flowers. And actually, I think I did a pretty good job of lining these up, considering I'm just going to add a little bit of light. Donna's favorite color is mint, in case anybody ever wants to send her anything. That's her absolute favorite. <laughs> and here's some dark granny apple green. 
So just another use for you to be able to maybe stretch your blends if you have them and you really aren't sure how to use them yet. So here's another idea for you. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit of darker something. Let's see. This is olive. Yeah. So I'm going to go with some light old olive. Actually, I think I'm going to bring, I'm going to fibbed. I'm going to go back to the dark. It's going to kind of be a, um, it's going to kind of be a, I don't want to say a crapshoot because that's not what I'm really meaning to say. It's, you're going to have to test and see because some of the colors, the lighter colors aren't going to show up as well as you think they're going to. The dark colors really do show up very, very well. All right, so that was dark old olive. So I did light and dark granny apple and then dark old olive. And I'm actually going to go back with the light granny and just blend this just a little bit because I feel like a couple of these have a little bit of streaks. And it does blend pretty nicely on the, the embossing powder. So you can see it has a very... Tone, tonal realistic look to it. So for this, I thought this would be really fun if we did something super duper bright. So I have Magenta Madness. So we'll try this. I'm going to go with the light one first. And let's see. Let's see. And I feel like I'm going to want a little bit of orange. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of light mango just in the center. I don't know why. Put that there. Bring this around. Okay, and then let's bring in a little bit of dark. Kind of to the edges, going out a little bit. bit at the center. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in with the light and just kind of go over and bring them together. All right, there's one. So I think if you did that I'm going to try. I don't know how good this is going to look, but I'm going to try balmy blue. Is that balmy? Yep, light and dark balmy. Just for the heck of it. I'm going to try a little bit of a blue. So the light is really, really light. You can't see it. So let's try the dark. It's still pretty light. You can see that there is a little bit of color there, but I think I'm going to need to add a little bit darker of a blue. So I'm going to add, I think this is light night of navy. Just kind of around the edges a little bit. There we go. That looks really nice. It's kind of more like um, on here, if you were to say like a cornflower blue, you know, that nice, um, it's a soft blue, but it's a little bit deeper. So you can see the difference between the two there. And then I'm going to go back in again with the dark balmy and kind of blend it in. And I would normally say I would go in with the orange or the mango, but I'm afraid that it's going to get onto this. So I'm going to leave that one as it is. And then for... The dragonfly, I'm going to add a little bit of dark highland heather. And then if I, I don't know, do we have, do we have peacock? I feel like we do. Bermuda. Is this peacock? Knight of Navy. I was using the wrong one. Light Knight of Navy. Dark peacock, light peacock. I'm going to go with a little bit of light peacock. Nope, too light. So it's it's funny because normally I would use the light ones on, um, on my paper or on my whatever I'm coloring first. 
but when you're going from, I think also with the black, it's just making it look much different. So then I'm going to go with the light and just kind of over blend. There we go. So this is a little bit weird. I don't know. I think I'm going to cover this up because I'm not really loving that as much as I originally thought I would. Make it a little bit, kind of look like it has a more concentrated color center. And it will take layers. So you can let this dry and then go back and add more to it. And it definitely will pick up uh, the layers of colors kind of the same way your blends would. So you can go back and add more to it. I mean, it definitely will take the color. Especially if you've, if you've set the embossing powder correctly. So, this one is definitely going to need a strip of something, like ribbon or something on it. So, there's that one. So, let's come over to the feathers. So, for the feathers, we'll do something a little bit different. We do, I believe, still have Purple Posy. So, we'll do Purple Posy. We have Highland Heather. And this is Razzleberry. I know we have Grape. Let me make sure. We have Grape. And Blackberry Bliss. Well, darn. I thought we had Grape. Do we not have Grape? Maybe we don't have Grape. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I'm here. Folders. Adhesives. Paper. Nope, no blends in the grape. No Rach, not there. I'm going to scoot all these out of the way a little bit more. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> you know, I assume we have all of them, but I know there are some that we don't have. And it's funny because those I'm always like, do we have that? Am I just missing it? So I'm going to start with Purple Posy, but I'm going to go with Dark because it's definitely... Purple Posy is really light as it is. So I'll just go with a little bit here. Do the plan, plan, you, uh, okay. So this is for, you probably could use markers, but this is more so for blends because the blends are alcohol based and the stamp and write markers are going to take a little bit longer to dry because they're water based. So I would say this is a technique for blends. So I'll show you, let's see, just for the sake of testing. We'll try the grape. So it doesn't really go to the color. It's kind of just wiping back and forth. If you can see, this is drying and this is just sitting on top and it's not really putting the color. And if you take your towel it will wipe off, whereas this will not wipe off. So no, it's not something you can do with Stampin' Rate markers. There you go, now we know. And I'm gonna go back in. That's with the, like those two. I'm gonna do another one, let's see, what was this one? Dark Blackberry Bliss. This is light. That's the other thing that confuses me. I don't know if any of you all have that problem or not, but sometimes when I look at the caps, the colors are so different. And I think to myself, I must have the wrong marker, but it's the same one. It's just that the color, the shade is so different that you just can't make out the that they're possibly the same thing. So I'm just blending the edge of this with my light. So I'm going back now with my light Blackberry Bliss and blending out that center line and making sure I have all the way to the edges. I'm going to do a little bit of this one. Okay. It might work with the watercolor pencils. Hold on, I have them here. They're all out. Let's see, that's Knight of Navy. See so if I can find something slightly complimentary. Here's Rich Razzleberry. Okay. 
Okay, so that's Rich Razzleberry. So it definitely is taking the color, but you can see the pencil marks on top of it. So let me, I'm just going to try one more thing. I'm going to try a blender pen just to see if it'll kind of soften it a little bit. But it really kind of just wipes it away. So I say maybe you could do watercolor pencils. It's still, it is definitely is darker than, than the Stampin' Write markers. Those, I would say, are a no-go, personally. That's just my personal opinion, though. Because you can do whatever it is that you like. Because it's your thing. So I have a couple purples. I'm going to do a little bit of Bermuda Bay. Just for something different. So maybe like some purple and kind of tealish. And then I'm going to bring in some Peacock. Pretty sure we have peacock as a blend. So I went light on the edge, dark in the middle, and then light again. It also probably really depends. We're going to have to look at these once these are all finished. So I'm probably not going to be able to finish all these as cards. Or else this is going to be a super long video and you guys might get bored. I can imagine watching somebody color things is not the most exciting thing. Especially if you can't fast forward it, right? But when I finish some of these up, we'll just have to see if we like some of the color, some of the stamped images that are more solid image. Um, maybe if they're not necessarily as solid of an image. So we'll have to see how that works out. This is going to be light, pretty peacock. So that's the light on the edge, and then I'm going to bring the dark in again on the center. Let me go over to the side here and do this one while I'm at it. Bring in a little bit more dark. I keep you entertained. Well, I'll tell you, while I'm coloring, I'll talk about what I did yesterday. So yesterday, Rainbow Stamper and his two... Uh, two girl cousins. We ended up going on a little fishing trip. We had a good time. I'm going to do one more just for like a contrast. I'm going to do the last one in navy. I'm going to do it in light and dark navy. So we went just right around here, not really very far. We went on a little fishing trip. The funny part is the water where we where we go, it's a it's a duck or a goose pond. And the water was so green, it was disgusting. <laughs> And a lady came up to us and said, are you actually catching any fish here? And I said, well, I'll be quite honest with you. I don't really think I would eat anything if I caught it here anyway. Because the water was just super full of algae. But they had a really good time. And then afterwards, we went to Sonic. And we ate in... A friend of mine brought my nieces. So she came and we ate in her Jeep, which is the thrill of Christian's life to eat in a Jeep. So that was really fun. That navy one. I really like the way that turned out. That's really pretty. So that one's really, really nice. I'm going to go over to this. I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to go with mango and light and light and dark mango. And then maybe we'll bring in some suede for the boat. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with the lighthouse yet. So we sat in the car and we ate Sonic. And then afterwards, you know, as if that wasn't good enough and we weren't full enough, then we went to this snowball stand that my friend goes to. And uh, so point of that story is we I think I had one of the best snowballs I've ever had in my entire life. Now, snowballs are kind of an East Coast thing. I'm not sure where everyone here is watching from, but they're not the same as a snow cone. That's totally different. The, this is a very specifically shaved ice, and there's def definitely different places you go depending on where you like your snowballs from. We um, have a snowball machine here at the house because we like snowballs that much that I bought one one year. And we had a snowball, and it was a chocolate snowball, but it had peanut butter sauce on it. And I'm going to tell you, I need to figure out this peanut butter sauce because this is one of the best things I've ever tasted in my entire life because I love Reese's, first of all, Reese's Cups. I love chocolate snowballs. Usually I do chocolate snowball with marshmallow on it. But we had that. It was so, 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 so good. So my friend said she was really hoping that we would end up having a thunderstorm and we could sit in this car and eat snowballs. And as soon as we got to the snowball stand, 
it started storming and I'm talking about heavy thunder lightning and pouring rain so everybody had the best day which was really fun it was nice for my friend because she um, is recovering from breast cancer so we all had such a fun fun day and I'm so glad we ended up doing it and Christian said it was one of his best days ever because you know we got to eat Sonic he got to eat cheeseburger and mozzarella sticks and then he got all hopped up on sugar <laughs> so it was a really really fun day I'm gonna bring in for the uh, lighthouse I'm gonna start with some dark poppy parade and then I think I'm gonna go over it a little bit with some of that soft suede so it kind of has like that worn look and then I'm gonna bring a little bit of blue up at the top here so it kind of looks like that glass I go with the dark a dark soft suede here so we had a really good day yesterday only about two more weeks until he goes back to school he is going back to school and he is really looking forward to it he says he's excited but he's a little bit nervous so I'm really hoping he has a good year and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of bronze just to kind of offset some of that Okay, and I want to do a little teeny bit of blue up here. Kind of looks like almost like a like a glass cage to it. So this one's a little bit different. I mean, the colors on it are a little unusual. Even if you ask me, I'll say they are as well. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more. I'm going to go over the poppy with the. What I think this needs is a little bit of cherry cobbler. I think that would make it look a little bit more brick-like. Is this the dark? This is the light. I probably should have gone with the dark, but that's okay. So there's that. So I think that looks, it's different. I like it. I really like the feathers. I think they turned out well. This is a little too cartoony for me, but I really also like the uh, palm trees so far. So which is your favorite thus far? We have one left. We have the leaves. And this one I'm going to try to do in some nice greens. And I am going to bring in, let's see, so, um, soft sea foam, which you know what? The light one isn't probably going to work at all. I'm going to bring in Donna's favorite mint. What else do we have here? And some mossy. So that's what I'm going to go with for these. Just move the rest of these out of the way. I have almost every single blend, which I have my blends in rainbow order. So I'm going to have to do some reorganizing once we're finished. Put them all back together. But there's that. All right. So we'll do these last ones. So I love the feathers too, Jen. And I think they look really, really nice. Feathers are your favorite, Karen? I'm glad. So this is dark sea foam. And I'm going to tell you, this one is just barely showing up. So I'm going to put these to the side, which I kind of had a feeling those would be a little bit hard. So let's go with light mint. Light mint is still too light. Let's go with dark mint. Dark mint is still kind of light, but you can barely see. It's really nice for this little one here because you can just barely see it. It's probably dynamite like this mint because it's just barely there. <laughs> I'm going to go with a little bit of light mossy meadow. Oh, this one's definitely showing up nicely. I'm going to send this card to Donna in express mail. Anybody else's kids going back to school? I know it's very mixed here in Maryland. The public schools are not going back. All right, this looks nice. I like this. I'm bringing in a little bit of shading, kind of just trying to stick to one side, and then we'll re-blend it. Also, hopefully next week, Rainbow Stamper is supposed to be starting outdoor soccer, so I'm hoping that still goes through. <laughs> The feather card. I know. I'm trying to think. I think the feather card is still going to need a little bit of some sort of ribbon to just kind of bring it together. 
All right, so that was the dark. I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to grab, I think this is the jade. I'm going to grab the jades, yeah. So I'll go with the light one to start on this. This looks like eucalyptus leaves to me. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like this is eucalyptus. Goodness, it's 1028. I think this is the longest video I've done in a while. Everything else I was doing was really kind of quick. And I was wrapping up. So thank you for hanging around for this little bit longer video. I think a lot of these are going to look really, really nice when we're finished. And we layer them together. <laughs> this one just catching it out of the corner of my eye reminds me of like a t-shirt you would see. <laughs> Somewhere in Ocean City. That's where we used to go all the time. Like a, a, bright, t a bright neon shirt on a, a base. Maybe I have a good idea here for a t-shirt company. Let's see. I'm going to bring in... I'm going to do Old Olive. Yeah, I'm going to try Old Olive for this last one over here. Go with the light first. And the light actually shows up pretty well here. And you can even start this with like a yellow base, like a darker of our yellow bases, and then add a little green to it because that would give you still a pretty nice looking green. And I have had a lot of my blends a long time. I think I've only replaced two or three of them. So they do last a really long time as long as you're gentle. If you're noticing, I'm trying not to, I'm not pushing on the tip. I'm kind of using the side and just adding and blending the colors together. I'm going to add a little bit more to this one because this is a little bit too light. It looks like I didn't do anything with it at all. And then where is my other one? What's this one? Oh, that's old olive too. <laughs> I want dark. I'm going to go with dark granny apple and bring a little dark in this one. And the colors are a lot different too because they are on black. Because it does make the colors show through differently. So it really, really changes the appearance of the colors. So those I ended up doing them in mint, but I went back over them just in a uh, a darker color because they really weren't really doing too much for the card. Okay, so there we go. So look at all, oh my Lord, all these markers I need to put away. So let me put these out of the way. Whoops, lost the cap. Hold on. Pop one of games until you lose the cap. I'm going to have to search for that one. <laughs> All right, so we have our leaves, our feathers, we have our sailboat, we have our flowers, our palm trees, and I'm going to put this one. This is the one we originally kind of started with, so you can see like doing it in yellow. So this one I started, where's my other card? Hold on. The one I originally started, I did the top did them kind of all the same and then I decided to make the bottom of the flowers a certain color and then the top a different color so I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you learned something new like I said I'm not sure if I'm the person that pioneered this technique I don't really think I'm a very good pioneer of anything but I'm definitely a pioneer of trying so we at least have to try stuff see if it works hold on I'm just trying to find my marker here so my my cap so my marker doesn't dry out but trying things to see if you can find some new uses for some of your stuff to maybe stretch some of your products a little bit which is always a good thing if you can find more than one use for something is always super super fun I will finish these cards and what I will do is found it I'll post all of these cards to my um, Facebook page. I'm not to my Facebook page. I apologize to my blog. That way you all can see them when they're finished and you can let me know what you think about it, which one ended up being your favorite versus maybe which one was your favorite now. So thank you guys so very much. Again, if you have anything that you would like to get, I would truly appreciate your support in my online store and you can shop up here with Daphne's host code. And hopefully this all goes well. Her party is only going to run two weeks. We could do someone else's party in the future. So that'll be really fun as well. 
Thank you guys very much for joining me. If you haven't already, make sure that you turn on the notifications here on Facebook. That way you'll know when I'm live or when I post something new on the Facebook. And if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, thank you very much for sticking around this long. I would love it if you would leave me a comment. And if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe, make sure you turn on the bell if you're watching this in YouTube because YouTube has really great notifications and it actually does tell you when I am live and when I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope you'll give this a try as well. So stay tuned to my blog, reachthestamper.com and I'll post all the cards here. I'm going to finish all of them, even though they're all not my favorite. I'm going to finish them all and post pictures of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.